Okay, so these are for biology 10.2 notes, the process of cell division. Before you draw anything, this goes on the top page of your notes, okay? And we're going to start drawing left to right, okay? And it will take you a little time if you need to pause to draw it while I'm talking, that is fine. So we all know, we've talked about where the genetic material is located in the cell. It's located in the nucleus. The genetic material can exist in a few different forms, and that's what we're drawing in here. So over here, draw a double helix, okay? So we have, I put a number one here. This represents one strand, and two represents the other strand, okay? We're going to talk more, of this, more about this when we get to genetics. But the DNA double helix contains genetic material. On it, it contains, um, you know, all the information needed for your body, okay? So if we were to take that double helix and wind it up further, okay, so draw an arrow here, and essentially it's getting wound up together more, it would create this form of the gen genetic material called chromatin. And all you need to do is just draw like a, a string, okay, draw a line that looks like a string, and put these round, um, what are called um, actually histone proteins, on the string. Chromatin is a form the genetic material can exist in. It's kind of a jumbled mess, and its nickname is beads on string because it looks like those histone proteins are on string. Okay. After you draw that, draw an arrow, and that chromatin gets wound up into these what looks like lollipops, okay, little bundles like this, and those are called nucleosomes. And there's the histone proteins on them, okay? And each step here, the genetic material is, is becoming even more packed tightly and wound. The final, draw another arrow here, the final um, genetic material form that it can exist in is called a chromosome. Write down chromosome down here. And it takes the shape of an H or a Y. Generally, we, I just draw it as an H. Okay, that's what in green here you see. So this is one chromosome. The middle of the chromosome where the two legs connect is called the centromere. And you can split those legs when you separate the centromere. And each leg, I have a little line here, represents something called a chromatid. Together those chromatids are called the sister chromatids. We'll talk more about those. And right down here in the chromosome, the DNA is packed extremely tight together. Okay? So what this slide represents is the different forms of genetic material that they these are all forms of genetic material and what they can look like and their names. All right. Next, um, you don't have this on yours, but just take a look here. So if we were to look in most of the cells in your body, um, the, your somatic cells, your non-sex cells, we would see, this is in the nucleus, these are your chromosomes, okay? This is what they, what they look like, their shapes. And if you were to take those chromosomes and line them up in size order, this would produce something called a karyotype. I have them right, karyotype, somewhere on your notes, just write that word. It's a picture of your chromosomes. We'll talk more about that later too. So your biggest chromosomes are pair one, all down, you know, the smallest, 22 through 20, 21 through 22. Your last pair of chromosomes, I just wrote a 23 here. These are 23rd pair. These are your sex um, chromosomes. So you either have two X's, XX, and that's females, or you have an X and a Y. So this person's karyotype, this is a male. Okay, so go ahead and this is on your next slide here, this circle. Um, it's good to take two colors if you can have two different colors for this part. And you can see in blue I made three-fourths of the circle um, blue and these direction of the arrows are important, okay? And that blue portion represents what's known as interface. Okay. The cell cycle, let's see if I can model this for you. This is a circle sticky note. 
The cell cycle is essentially how one cell, the process of turning one cell into, over time, two cells that are genetically identical. Okay? So the cell cycle always starts with this phase called interphase. Okay? So that would be up here at the blue. The first part of interphase is called the G1 phase. This is where the cell just starts growing, getting bigger in size. Okay? The next phase is called the S phase, where the DNA within the cell and the cell parts start to duplicate and replicate. All the organelles need to duplicate. The DNA needs to duplicate exactly double. The G2 phase is next. Essentially, the cell is just getting ready for the next stage. Um, take a red marker here, um, or if you're not using red, okay, and um, color it red. Okay. I'll do mine too, okay. That represents mitosis, or the M phase, M phase, okay. Mitosis, the M phase, is what happens within it is something called mitosis, and then also cytokinesis. Make sure you write that down. So, in the cell cycle, it starts with the inner phase, do, 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 and then it goes into the M phase, in which mitosis happens, and cytokinesis. We're going to talk about all these steps, okay? But it's a cycle. So, one cell starts an interphase, it can split into two cells, okay? I should have been better prepared here. Hold on. Here we go. Two cells, okay? Once they're done with this, essentially two cells are made, and these two cells can now start again an interphase to split into boom, boom four cells, okay? And then those four cells can then start an interphase again and keep going and going and going. It's called the cell cycle. Okay, I'm going to play this little video for you. So this is um, a cell. We can see the cell membrane, the nuclear membrane. Watch what happens. This is the cell cycle. Oops. And watch down here. I wrote IPMAT. You might want to write those of it. IPMAT. So we're going to start an interphase. Now the cell is going into prophase. And now metaphase. And now anaphase. It's our telophase. And telophase essentially happens at the same time as cytokinesis is happening. Here's the end of cytokinesis. And what we have at the end of one cell cycle, two cells, genetically identical. All right, and they can then both go into interface again. So the first um yeah. Good. So the first stage of the cell cycle is called interface. So circle interface here. And label these parts. Label the cell membrane, label the nuclear membrane, and label the chromatin. That's the shape the genetic material is in this nucleus, the form that it takes. Okay. The next phase is prophase. Go ahead and circle prophase and make sure you um, find the right picture on your notes that you know that corresponds to the picture I'm showing you. Things you want to highlight here, of course, you have the cell membrane again. I want you to note that the nuclear membrane has disappeared. The nuclear membrane is gone. It's very important to note. Also note, circle, the appearance and the movement of the centrioles. They have moved to the poles of the cells or opposite ends. Okay, And out shooting from the centrioles, you see these little, I call it like a little spidey web. These are called spindle fibers. And they're actually leaving the centrioles. And the genetic material has taken on a different form. No longer is it chromatin, it is chromosomes. So make sure you write that. Metaphase. We see still the cell membrane, nuclear membrane is still gone. We're going to see the chromosomes line up at the middle. Write that down. Metaphase, the chromosomes <laughs> ah, line up at the middle. And also note the spindle fibers attach to the centromere or the center of those chromosomes at this step. So they're attached. 
next phase, anaphase. Write down the spindle fibers are pulling the chromosomes apart. And now they're just the legs of those chromat chromosomes. If you remember, they have a name called a chromatid. Make sure you label that. That's anaphase, the pulling apart of the chromosomes. The next phase is telophase. A few things to note here. We see the nuclear membrane is reappearing right here and over there. We see the cell starts to pinch. They start to pinch off from one another. This pinching is, has a name. It's called a cleavage plural, the actual pinching. Okay. Um, cytokinesis, write down an arrow up here, is when the cytoplasm splits equally between the two cells. That is cytokinesis, the splitting of specifically the cytoplasm. That's important because if the cytoplasm doesn't split equally, you're going to have two cells that are unequally shaped or one's bigger than the other. And at the end, this is the end of one cell cycle, interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, we have two cells. Write down 46. They have 46 chromosomes in their nucleus, and they're genetically identical to one another. I should mention, I don't, I forget if I did, but this cell, go back to interphase, it also started with 46 chromosomes in the middle. 46, okay? Make sure you add that in there, go back to interphase. So all the way through, interphase, and prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, Cytokinesis, <clears throat> mitosis, produces two cells that are genetically identical, and they both have 46 chromosomes. Last page here of 10.2. Um, I should also say these are called daughter cells, two daughter cells. Okay, so... We already went over prokaryotic um, replication. And I don't think you have that in your notes, so let me just take care of that. We don't need that there. Oops. So don't write that. Okay. Right over here, cytokinesis. Over here. I want you to write animal cell, and over here, I want you to write plant cell. Okay, so we're going to talk about cytokinesis in a plant oops, compared to an animal cell. There we go. Okay, in an animal cell, do I have a few hand thing here? Where would you draw it? There's a cell. There's a cell for a plant cell. What forms in a plant cell oops, as it's um, splitting in two? It has something called, right in between them, that's an arrow right there. That is called a cell plate. Because plant cells will split by mitosis, so will animal cells, okay? And they do it the same way, except plant cells form this wall in between them called, an an called a cell plate, okay? So there's a plant cell, there's a plant cell. Animal cells um, form, I'm trying to find a, you can't draw it. It doesn't work. There we go. Okay. Forgot how to do that. So remember the cleavage furrow and the pinching off of the cells? Okay. Draw two little arrows here. One this way and one that way. The animal cell just pinches off from one another. Pinches off. It doesn't form... Um, doesn't form a cell plate, okay? The cells just pinch off from one another in that cleavage furrow, okay?
And that's the end of 10.2 notes.